welcome i'm kippy from kippydome.com welcome to my home welcome to my channel tonight we're going to be crafting up a really pretty christmas stocking you can make one of these for everybody on your christmas list they're gonna love it it's easy it's inexpensive and it's so customizable so let's get started i've gathered up my supplies i've printed out my pattern and i've taped it together i've used this pattern more than once as you can tell and it'll be self-explanatory once you print it out because you'll have to do a little taping together but i'm just going to set that aside here's my ball fringe wasn't sure if i was going to use it so i got some trims out i got out some white linen for the cuff red and white polka dot for the main fabric and then i'm using a sheet that i got on sale for my lining and then i have my craft fuse for the inner lining i wanted to share a stocking that i've made using this pattern and I'll show you the method I will be sharing with you today is a method that will make sure that you won't see any raw seams at all so it'll be very professionally made so when you lift up the cuff you won't see any seam allowances you won't see any inside and it will be a really a cherished family heirloom for years to come the first piece I'm going to cut is going to be red and, red and white fabric and I want to fold it so I'm not wasting any of the fabric. So I actually folded it crossways and that's okay as long as you keep it straight on the cross grain or the grain. And I used my salvage edge to kind of determine that. I used the top of the, of the, of the stocking, the straight edge, and I looked at it against the salvage edge and then pinned it in place and cut however if you have a solid you can do the same thing but if you have a nap i've made some of them that had a nap then it has to all the nap has to go the same way and i have more about that in a blog post and i actually used safety pins to mark the top of the nap so every piece had to have the safety pin at the top or it would be upside down and the nap would be going one way on one and one on another and you would be able to tell so I didn't want that. I like to pin these before I cut them. I want to make sure that they're where I want them to be. They're a little bit they have a little bit of a harder to cut because they have some curves and corners and I want to make sure I cut them all the same. So I'm using pins in all those areas that I'd have a little more of difficulty cutting around. I'm trying to keep my project under the camera, but I'm going to recommend that any time that you are looking into the scissors instead of looking, the fabric is on the back side, and that is why I'm cutting what I'm calling a relief cut, so I can easily manipulate this so I can see it better. Um, ordinarily, I would just whip the fabric around, but I wanted to make sure it was in the screen, but you can see what I'm saying, that, that I want to look at the scissors after the fabric, not the scissors blocking what I'm cutting. So you always want to make sure your scissors are, are not blocking what you're cutting. This is like a struggle and that's why I turned it. So make sure you do that if, if it's possible for you to do it to make sure it's easier to cut that way. Now we're going to cut out our lining and I'm using this sheet that I mentioned before that I use for other projects and I want to fold it to make sure that I can serve it. This will be our lining and this is the the part that will have the little markings that I was mentioning where we would have the we wouldn't sew it closed so we could turn it so let's get this thing cut out and get sewing just like on my red and white I'm using that top edge because it's a straight edge and I'm going to I'm kind of eyeballing it to make sure that it's straight on that piece of fabric then I'm going to pin it and cut out just like before and as you see, I'm doing those relief cuts again so I can get in there and get a better cut instead of trying to cut it perfectly um, why it's connected to the bigger piece of fabric. It's a little harder to do. And then once I get it all cut out, then I'm going to mark that where it says leave it, you know, to leave it open um, for the turn, you know, to turn the fabric. So this is the piece that I'm going to mark it on. I don't mark it on the other ones and you'll see why in a moment. I'm using a water erasable and there's also an air erasable there but I'm using water to make sure that it stays on even though I'm making it all at one time but in case I had to leave it and come back to it the next day I want to make sure my markings are there so I'm marking those those edges and then I'm going to turn it over after I've got it cut out and then mark the other side I want to make sure that I don't sew that closed that is how I'm going to turn my stocking all right, the next thing we're going to cut out is going to be our craft fuse. And this craft fuse is what is called an interlining. And it gives a little stiffness in body. It does have a 
sticky side and a non-sticky side. So we need that sticky side to be cut in two different directions. So we will have an opportunity to adhere them to either side of the wrong side of the outside of the stocking. You'll see what I mean in a minute. So it doesn't matter how you place it on there because it is not a woven fabric. It is a fused interfacing so don't worry about that you can pin it on there just conserve it and pin it good and then cut it out once we remove the pins we will take off a little around the edges and I will show you more about that in just a second before I started trimming I made that little mark so I'd make sure that it came around to the very same spot so I'm not spiraling and cutting off more and more and I did put a few pins in just to kind of keep the two pieces together as I cut cutting off less than a half an, an inch so I would say a quarter of an inch is a good number so about a quarter of an inch I'm just kind of eyeballing it I want to make sure that those um, that my sticky part because this is fuse it fuses with heat and it you know the glue comes i want to make sure that that is not in my seam allowance it's easier to turn without that in there and also i don't want to get it on my iron or my ironing mat before i put my craft fuse on i want to make sure that my fabric does not have any wrinkles in it whatsoever so i'm giving everything a quick iron and i'm using my favorite little craft and iron this is just the cutest thing if you don't have one i'd certainly put it on my um, must have list for santa and the little press mat if you like to craft it's these are great tools so i'm going to get this pressed up and then i'm going to show you how i put that craft fuse on and something that i make sure that you um do is to make sure you cut out one left side and one right side so to speak of all of these and make sure your craft fuse that you put the shiny side down because that's the one that is the, that has the glue on it and i have made that mistake and oh my gosh that is so hard to get off your iron so be real sure about that and make sure that you have one cut that goes on one leg and one the other way so you have to put both sides read the manufacturer's instructions on whatever your craft your craft fuse is and i imagine they're all about the same but mine says that on a pretty high heat as high as heat as your fabric can withstand and steam so i'm just doing it until it is adhering and you can just kind of lift up a corner and see if it's actually adhering and if it is then you've you've done it perfectly for a little added bonus i always iron it from the right side as well just to make sure that's really glued on there good and once again you can check those corners and make sure that you've got it all adhered i'm going to iron my lining as well and the cuff fabric i'm going to make sure that all of this looks as well as it can at the very beginning and it will have to be ironed again at the end but this will keep it from having to as much ironing now we're going to cut out the cuff first thing i'm going to do is try to straighten this fabric a little bit i have like a little strange corner cut off there and so i'm going to try to um, get it a little bit thread perfect so i'll have a place to cut off of you can either print out the pattern or you can um, do what i'm doing and just cut it from the measurements and i'll put all that in the description below so i'm just ironing up my little corner here and i'll get this thing cut out and we'll get sewing All right, we got our pattern pieces all cut out for the basic stocking part. We still have a little tag to cut out or, or, or hanger loop, but we're gonna get this pinned up and we are going to place it right sides together and pin it. And we will not be pinning or sewing that top close. That top of the stocking is staying open. We'll repeat the same process with pinning our lining pieces together, however, we want to make sure that we do not sew or pin that area where we're going to turn it. So make sure you have right sides together and we will get that pinned up and sewn. I get excited when I start sewing. So I decided to learn this years ago is to make this little X. And that's at the beginning at the end of my little area that I don't need to sew in. 
So that tells me X marks do not sew here. So if that's just a little trick I do, it might be something you would want to do as well. But it works for me and hopefully that would work for you too. So do not sew in that area. So you're going to skip and then sew again after it. Thought I would pin this while we're pinning and this is our cuff. So it might look a little strange there how I'm going to sew it, but not to worry, it'll all make sense. So I'm actually going to sew it because I need to put the other sides together to sew. So it becomes a circle. I'm going to put the short sides together and I'm going to sew along the short sides. I wanted to share this because this stocking has two sides that has a seam allowance and this cuff only has one. So the it appears that the cuff is too small, but that's just because it has two seam allowances. And so don't worry about that. Just keep sewing because it does look a little small, but it works out. I'm using a tiny little scrap here to make my little hanger for my stocking. Now, if you're making a set, they I would recommend that you cut all of these at the same time so they are the exact same shape and size. But you can use a rotary cutter and just use you decide on how long you want that to be and then you cut it. I will have a little pattern for that if you want to follow my same um, pattern or you can come up with your own. This is um, unique to whatever you want or you can just use this. It's pretty standard. So before I get to the machine, I thought I would iron this and that's what I do is I iron it in half and then I fold back the edges. Now you don't have to fold them all the way back. I'm going to fold them partially back, but you can fold them all the way back to the center and try not to iron the center crease flat. I've done that one before and you have to pull it back open and fix it, but that's all right. It's nothing that can't be fixed. And then I do the other side. We're going to repeat the process on the other side, get that iron down, and then we will fold it in half and iron it again. The little hoop is going to be folded over and you're going to just have to decide what's going to be visible to the outside. And I, I kind of like to side with the polka dots, but if you have a solid like I did on this other one, then it wouldn't make any difference. But we're going to line it up along the area where you see the seam allowance on the inside and that's the back side of the stocking away from the toe it's on the heel side first we better get it pinned and get it sewn together I'm going to be sewing and, and every one of my stitch every one of my seam allowances I'm going to reverse to lock the stitch so I'm going to go forward a few and back a few and I have it at what I'd call the normal stitch length and I'm just going to do about a half an inch seam allowance and this is the cuff and I'm I have on I have white thread in so I'm going to do my white first and then I'm going to change my thread to red so I'm just going along where I have it pinned I'm going to back and forth lock my stitch on both sides and then you can either iron this out and what you don't want to do is to iron it without a ham or rolled up towel because you don't want to make a crease in it doing the same thing now same seam allowance with the this is the, the lining and I'm going to back stitch and forward and go forward again and then if you remember we have to go slow around those curves and and when we get to the little area where we have blocked off don't sew I will just cut the thread go back and forth cut the thread lock my stitch and then move on to that next little tiny area and repeat that process so here I am at my little double X's. So that is where we're going to skip over and we're going to lock our stitch. We're going to go forward and back without removing the other pins to make sure we do not make that mistake. Same thing and we are finished with this one. As you can see I've changed my thread to red, both my needle thread and my bobbin thread and I am doing the same kind of stitch but I'm going a little closer in with my foot I'm just using the foot itself the presser foot as a guide so I can go along both edges of my loop hanger loop so and I'm doing the same thing with the back and forth to lock the stitch now I'm going to sew the red and white polka dot and with the fused craft fuse attached to it and about the same same thing half half inch seam allowance lock in my stitch front and back and I'm going to go all the way around and not sew anything that wasn't already pinned and that would be that top opening has to stay open 
So we're going to go around, I'm going to call it three sides. The two sides in the bottom, just leave the top open and go slow around those curves. I'll just lock that stitch at the end and presto, we are finished with that part. My next step is going to be to clip my curves. And what happens is when you go to turn this, it'll, it will be unable to turn neat, neatly and have a nice seam unless you clip those curves. And you want to be super careful not to clip through your stitching line. So make a few small cuts and then maybe even a few more after that. Get in there real good. And I've also trim around some of those curves that go the other way. So the indented in curves you definitely have to clip, but the outer curves that aren't intended <laughs> like the heel and the toe you can actually trim some of that away so I'm going to do a little of both I'm going to repeat that process of clipping the curves and now this is the lining and I'm not going to trim it I'm just it doesn't have that heavy piece of craft fuse on there which is going to make it really harder to turn so that's why I did it on the red but this is getting a good clip and remember our little area there is not sewn I'm just showing it to you <laughs> we'll we'll get that fixed and sewn back together as soon as we get our stocking sewn together I'm going to turn my stocking fabric inside out and I'm going to just use my hand to try to work around those curves to get them nice and neat and then once I get that we're going to work on putting our cuff on the out on the top of the edge look how cute that is that is going to be adorable Kind of reminds me of candy or I don't know just completely fun you can kind of finger press along there and as I mentioned before you don't want to really put a big iron on there you might be able to do the little one just along there but you do not want to press those folded edges in so we're just let's see if we can get just a quick little iron and what I'm trying to get rid of is the folded edge that was in the fabric originally as well let's see if we can do that so we're going to press that open and being careful if you have a big iron it would be easy to to make that crease so you do not want to do that now i want to fold my seam allow uh, my both my seams together i'm going to fold this right side out so pay attention to where you sew that if your cuff has a an outside and an inside so it only has one seam we're going to make sure it's together and now you can actually put this if you have a ham you could iron it together um, with your ham but you do I do not like it creased at the bottom so I don't want to iron that part since my cuff does not have two seams I fold it in half and I find where it would have a seam and I use my little um, purple marker and I make a little mark there then I put a pin to hold the two sliding pieces together because they are kind of slipping and sliding and I'm so once again I can see where that where I had that fabric folded and I'm trying to get it out linen can be a little bit of a difficult thing to iron out so I'm putting it on my little stocking and I'm going to match up the seam allowances and the seam allowance on the back is going to be like easy because all seams to seams so I'll pin those together and then the front I'm going to pin where I have the pin and the little purple mark and I'll match that to the seam and the red and white polka dot. Pin that all around and then we're going to sew it together. I'm just showing you that make sure that you have it pinned in there good and you can pin with a couple of pins to hold open those seam allowances. So you can see that they'll fit all together really pretty. Okay, we're ready to sew. My machine, you can actually move the little thing off the bottom and it has a free arm. But I wanted to show you, in case you don't have that, you have to sew it kind of like from inside like this. So if your machine has that, great, use it. If not, we're gonna do this. This is kind of a basting stitch because we still have to add our loop hanger and then our lining. So this is just to kind of hold it all together because there's a lot of layers to have to sew at one time. I'm going to fold my little loop in half and then I'm going to put it on the, the side, the back side, which is the one that ha actually has a seam allowance in the cuff. And that is the side that has the heel. 
I'm going to just kind of line it up on the seam allowance there, pin it on, and sew it. And I'm going to sew it, stitch it back and forth and back and forth to reinforce it. This is like my favorite part, y'all. We're going to actually put our right sides together. We're going to put our stocking inside the lining. So we're going to have right sides together. And you can see the mechanics of this, how this will work. So when you turn it, you'll have the right side of the lining out and the right inside and the right side of the stocking on the outside. You'll see in a moment as I get going. So you just want to kind of put it over top of it. The important part is, is that we line it up at the top and that you also do not catch that, that hanger loop in it. But make sure um, on the outside, make sure it is in the inside because you definitely want to sew that in there correctly and then once again we're going to line up our seams and we're using that little um, mark that we made on our stocking cuff and then you also have the seam on the inside too as a um, reference so once you get that lined up you can start pinning it in So we will be sewing around that area and let's get it over to the machine. Okay, we can completely sew around this and I'm gonna take extra care over those areas that are a um, little harder to, to sew and that would be over those seam allowances a little bit thick. And of course I have that loop hanger in there and that's really heavy. So I'm gonna go back and forth a couple times to help to hold that in there. That's a, that'll take a little bit more um, time to go over so go slowly and then just keep going go all around until you get back to where you started and go back and forth and lock your stitch again cut it and oh my gosh the fun is just beginning okay this is the fun part it's my favorite part and we are going to turn this so we are going to pull out and so you can see what that looks like our stocking from the inside and we'll flatten it out and we can see what that look it's going to look like with the seam allowances you can see all of the seam allowances now and so they're all encased inside the stocking so there's a little turnout of, is a really neat job very professional looking stockings and you can see they took only it only took a few minutes to make and not um they weren't too they weren't too um difficult to do either see pretty simple so you can see just one over the other and so now we're actually going to turn it. We're looking for that little hole that we left, our little unstitch with the blue marks, and now we're gonna turn it with that. Through that, we are going to pull, pull out our main stocking fabric to begin with, and you can smooth that out with your hand, and we might even do a little pressing on it once we get it out. I'm sure that linen cuff is gonna need a little bit of pressing. So once we get it down there, you can use your hand and smooth it out and then we'll tuck the other part in. But we do need to close that hole, so we'll have to do that too. And I'm actually going to use um, needle and thread and hand stitch it, but you can do it on the machine as well. It just looks a little more neat if you hand stitch it. There it is. That's that little seam. Now we'll need to close that and we can do the ladder stitch. And another idea is that you could use like a little... Um, stitch witchery type of thing between there and the kind of little woven glue that you can get you can actually just press that closed this is not something you're really going to wash so it can just be even i mean any fabric glue you could fabric glue it together my reservation on using that is that i'll get some because i get a little sloppy with those type of things and i might get it somewhere else on my stocking and make a mess of it so for me a little hand sewing is going to be best so I'm going to thread my needle with about, you know, 12 inches of thread knotted, and then I'm going to do the ladder stitch. So to make that knot, I'm just going to have my needle already threaded, and I'm going to wrap around the needle a few times, and then use my little finger and pull it off, and that makes a nice knot at the end. And then once I get that off there, I can clip, if I've got a little bit of a tail, I can clip that off, and then I can put through my thread heaven. If you're um, someone who wants to make sure there's no 
knots or anything that happen in there and make a nice smooth and neat then you really might want to use some thread heaven so i'm just trying to seat my knot, my little knot inside so i started on one side and i'm going back the other but i want that knot to be inside it's so close to the top of my stocking so now i'm just going to go back and forth and perform the ladder stitch so i can pull it together neatly and it closes and no one's to know that it was left open so i'm just going to get in there and I'm gonna knot this off and we're going to cut it and then we can turn or push this part back in there now i'm pulling this knot through and then i'm going to cut it you'll see i'm putting it somewhere else in it and then cut it and then it will just kind of go the little tail will go down inside there as I I'm working on it so now you can see that and before I turn it I'd like to use a little bit of water and all I did was take a paper towel and get it wet and so that apps takes those blue marks right out so that takes about <laughs> all of I don't know a half a minute and now we're ready to turn it turning is going to be just pushing that lining down inside and so I don't want to have that lining up all the way up to the edge. I, when I go to iron it, you'll see in a moment that I like to push it in a little bit more. So I turn under a little bit of the cuff at the top. This is what I was talking about where I'm pushing a little bit in there. So I just sh show a little bit of the cuff at the top and push that lining to the inside. I do not want that lining to be seen from the outside unless you're looking down into it. But while it's hanging, I definitely don't want to see lining. So I'm actually making a pressed seam, pushing it everything towards the center, but all kind of the same. You can eyeball this, it'll be easy. And the small iron makes an easy job of it, doing little jobs like this. The best thing to use when you're ironing the outside of this is a, is a pressing hem. And so I decided I would show you what we used to use um, before I ever got a pressing hem was a, I rolled up towel. So a white towel or whatever. Yeah, I use white just so it doesn't transfer color to anything. So I roll up a towel and I stick it in there and I use it for my pressing hem. Oh, it's turning out so cute. I don't think I'm going to add the ball fringe this time. I think I want to ask my daughter to make us some name tags. And why I like name tags is that sometimes you want to turn the stockings like two one way and two another way. And if you've put the names on one side, then you're stuck with whatever side that is. So if we do removable name tags, you can change the tags, you know, with the whatever somebody might be into that year you know you can customize them to the year and to the name and it's just fun so that's how i like to do it but you do it anyway you customize them any way that you like aren't these going to be cute and if you don't have a fireplace i actually add another set in our family room so we just kind of decorate with them because i love making them and they, they're so cute and i hang those so i only have a fireplace in our living room so in the other room i use a blanket ladder so if you want to see how to make that blanket ladder i'll put the link for it in the description below and it's super easy and the kids will love that you can use it all year you can put blankets on it of course and you can hang all kinds of things on it for display but it's perfect at christmas time for stockings oh that was so much fun thank you so much for joining me tonight i hope you found some inspiration would just appreciate it so much if you would subscribe ring the bell and i will see you soon merry christmas